Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so it is still Saturday and I filmed earlier this morning um, part one and two for the project. And then I said I was gonna head off and dye some paper in Parisian essence to get ready for making these journals. And it looks like we're making four, which is a challenge in itself. So I've just come back to my desk and I have everything sitting here in a big mess. It's 90% dry, maybe a few things a little bit uh, damp, which will dry overnight. So all I wanna do now, I guess, is sort it. Look at my fingernails. They are yucky from being in the Parisian essence. Now, if you're wondering what Parisian essence is, I bought back with me from my laundry, the bottle. I've actually finished this one and there was just a tiny little bit in the bottom and that was enough to make quite a weak sort of um, mix. So there's still a bit of water kicking around there. So a bit of a mess. That container is what we call in Australia a Leamington tin. So it would make a sponge cake rectangular in shape. Um, now the measurements of that tin. So if I had a quarter of an inch of Parisian essence left, probably three tablespoons maybe four this this um dish is nine inches by 12 and a half and height is two so i pretty much filled this full of water tipped in the residual of this um essence which is probably about three to four tablespoons and that made my bath and then i probably dyed Oh, probably half a ream of copy paper and then just some random things like these envelopes so they're all done whether I use them or not it doesn't really matter I guess because I had a bit of solution left so I thought I might as well just dye a few so I've got some standard business envelopes and assortment from um, getting bills through the mail and then I had a couple new ones that I actually opened up and then some just general envelopes that one's a cream one that was a white one so you can see just that little bit of staining gives this a bit of a change in color and being a cream envelope it's a little bit darker again so I've got a few envelopes so I'll just put them to one side I can find a bull clip and I bet I can't I use so many bull clips. They're fantastic for holding things together, you know, in um, clusters. So when you're journaling, you've sort of got yourself a little bit organized. So I'll just put, pop them down on the floor for now because I don't have one handy. And I'm just going to flip through the papers. This is general paper, just white. This bandit having a bark. Nothing nothing printed on that it's just general paper I might just zoom up a little bit or out a little bit that's better so I'm just flipping through it to make sure there's none of the printed pages in there while I was waiting for paper to dry I um, worked on the description for these videos um, what I mean by that if I refer to anything that you may want to look into further like um, maybe the video showing the Parisian essence dyeing that I did a little while ago I will have a link to that video down below which I don't at the moment I just thought of it then so I'm just going to write a little note to myself YouTube video so I'll pop that link in the description below all of the videos so I'll sort of drag that same description right through all of the videos so you'll find the Parisian essence video in there that I made a little while ago on how the process I go through to make this paper I've also listed all of the digital kits that I've found and used and I've printed a couple more because I, like I said, I had, you know, about half an inch of liquid left in the bath, the tray, and thought, oh, I'll, I'll go and looking for some more digital prints that I think will suit. So um, I've got a couple of those to show you as well. 
Now this is just general paper. So that's probably, oh, probably half a ream of paper, all dyed, ready to go. Now I put that in a folder, one of the plastic folders that you get from Officeworks in Australia. Let me just see if I've got one here. Yeah, this is, this is it here. Get rid of that, that shouldn't be in there. And this is just where I keep all of my coffee dyed paper. Nice and easy. These are two pieces I've been hoarding. I had an experiment ages ago, probably 12, 18 months ago, in dyeing um, paper and getting a print on it. So using Prusidian Essence as well. And that's a plastic uh, doily that I picked up at um, Spot. Oh, I think it's Spotlight. Yeah, Spotlight. You can buy it by the meter. So I just bought, you know, 20 centimeters of it. They cut it off and that was enough to sort of lay it's very fiddly, very messy, very time consuming. They're my last two pieces and I've just been waiting for a special journal to pop them in. But at the moment, um, I'm just hoarding them. Is that silly? I'm hoarding dyed paper, crazy. So this little pile, Fudge has now walked in and he's gonna jump up on this table and paper's gonna go everywhere. So this pile here, that should be the pieces I tore down ready and it should be front and back just the printed pages ready to go straight into the journal. You'll notice that I'm turning everything the right way. That's the bunny that we're backing to each other. Get into the habit of getting your papers up the right way because there is nothing worse. Here comes Fudge hanging on to the pages and up he comes. Hello, Fudge. You can move along now, Fudge. <laughs> Goodness me, Fudgy. You're now upsetting the apple cart here. Keep moving, puss. That's it. Off you go. Off, off you go. Right to the end. That's it. Okay. Um, like I was saying... Get into the habit of making sure all your papers are up the right way. Nothing worse than flipping through your journal after you've stitched in the digitals only to find that something is upside down. It's just earth shattering is the word to describe it. So they're all good. So they're torn, they're dyed, they're ready just to fold and insert. So I'll create a pile for them. Things like this is ephemera maybe to be made into something but also printed on the back is some of the pages um, to go in the journal so who knows what will come of all that that's a little project that I want to do with the dried flowers so I've just coffee uh, not coffee Parisian stained those this little bunny one with the bunny that was on the back I'm just going to put it in the ephemera pile Sure, there was another bunny because I want to make a pocket, a pocket out of all that. So have I missed it? So there it is. So that's the other bunny one. So I'll put those two together because that is not a page. It's going to be a um, pocket within a signature. So let's have a little look. Now, some additional things that I printed. I went to Artie Mays and I found this um it's an eco dyed prints that she had on her etsy store purchased it ages ago and i've never used it and i just sort of remembered that um they were there and the color tones might work now on the back of that i just printed uh, a general lined paper and you can see there's just the rough outline of words there you can't quite distinguish what the words are but this is my go-to background for when you want to have some pages through a journal where people can write proper journaling. So, and if it gets collaged over and little bits of those lines are showing, well, that's great too. It, it just works. So I tend to put this on the back of pretty much everything that I want um, as a page in the journal and somewhere to write. So I think there's four pages of that that I printed. There's a 
purpley colored one. I don't know if it'll suit, but I saw it there and I thought, oh, I'll print it. We might use it. Okay, there's another frame. So I'll put that in the uh, ephemera to make pile. Um, what else did I find? Oh, this, this one here. Um, now, what was the name of this? This um, digital. Hmm. I, I'm gone blank. I don't think I've actually found this particular artist. It's called Dictionary Pages. What I'll do is I will insert about now. My fingers will give the motion to remind me the name of this digital kit on Etsy. And I will also have it in the uh, description below. But it's another one of my go-to. It is a couple different files and it's words out of the dictionary where the artist has um, created uh, some floral treatments on the page or just some subtle, um, like this one's just got tiny little outlines of flowers, but this one's a lot more predominant. And there's another one, real English roses. So just gorgeous. I'll make a little pile of those this is a butterfly page. Can't remember who that is. I think it's Artie Mays. If not, it's connected to this. Could be porch prints. Either way, these three or four shops, there's probably about five shops that I mentioned. Go and have a look at them. Go have a look at all their files. I've only linked you to the shop. Look at that. Present them. Um, so go and have a look. That's another one of the dictionary ones. That's gorgeous. That one I've showed you. That's an Elmer, Elmerac news, um, newspaper letter from the museum that's been made into a digital print. Not sure what I'll do with it. Just going to gather them together and I'll put them in the ephemera pile. I don't think they'll be a page. I think they might be an envelope or who knows. That's another file that I use occasionally too. It's from um, Love Junk Journal's Tracy Fox. Now her labels are also going to feature in this somewhere. They always do. But that's uh, a really good little um, file as well. That could even be part of her free ones that she does. So if you go to her Facebook site, follow all the links and, you know, newsletters or whatever it is she does to get these things out to us all. Um, you might find that envelope. It's just uh, two sizes really handy. So I printed four of them. This is also one I referred to earlier. That can go in the ephemera. It'll be like a, a flip out or something. What have we got here? Plain paper. Put that down there. Some more dictionary page. All with the lines on the back. So this is a really good way of seeing my process of getting ready to do these things. I'd love to jump straight into the journal itself, like decorating. There's another eco. So I'm sure I've got four with lines on the back. Uh, what have we got here? Another butterfly. Now I'm not saying that I'll use all these, but they'll turn up somewhere. And my stock had got really low. I haven't made you know, this style of journal for a little while now. So I really did need to uh, refresh my supply. And I have these plastic envelopes that I just get from Woolworths. Um, and you get like five in a pack for $2. They're in the stationery aisle. And they're like a plastic sleeve. So I'm just gonna grab some of those now. Yeah. Bear with me as I jump up show you those. A couple empty ones here. Okay, I've even got one with Artie Mays, so we might even use that. So these, yeah, they're just, they're thin. They're great for holding paper and they're, um, yeah, in packs of five for a couple dollars at Woolies. So I've got those to one side. I might put the ephemera bits and pieces in there 
so we won't need them until we do an episode where we just want to craft this Artie Mays this was a free one I think she did I, from memory we were um what were we doing she was I know she did some collage ones so yeah so I might just leave that out of play. You can see the difference in dyed paper, so that's just going to confuse me. We'll put that one away. Let's see if we can get another empty. Yep, here's another empty one. Okay, so we've got some torn pages already, so let's get those. They're what I call ready to go. They are torn, deckle edge on the edge of them ready just to grab and fold so maybe what we might do i know this will be boring now so if you did want to tune out and go elsewhere fine by me but i need to now tear and prep all of these papers and i'd rather just get it done so that i can just grab and go so I'm just going to tear down the butterfly page. There's a lot of tearing, guys. I'll try to amuse you with the story. Then just check that everything's okay that side, and it is. So next, I probably won't do the whole video doing this. That would just be too much. But I do want to get some of it done. So Deckle Edge Ruler, this little ruler that I'm using, if you don't have one already and you're wondering what it is, it is fantastic. It is from We Are Memory Keepers. I believe I got it on Amazon and it came in a set of three. The other two, I don't know where they are, they looked, they looked full on. The teeth on them were like this side, really big and gnarly and... When I did do some tearing with them, it was just all sorts of trouble. So I don't know what you'd actually use them for. They weren't suitable for what I was doing. They're probably meant for thicker paper. I don't know. So I don't, haven't used them. They're in somewhere in this room. I'll probably end up putting them in the bin because it's just stuff, isn't it? We've all got stuff. So if you did want to grab one of these rulers, they're pretty good. And they, honestly, they're not cheap. I can't remember how much they are, but I remember thinking, gee, for a piece of plastic. And they probably cost them to produce, you know, like 40 cents. And then they put three of them together and charge us. I don't know. I can't remember what it was. I have a feeling it was like $30. So there's my four butterfly pages with writing on the back. So I'm going to slide them into here. Now I'm going to just tear some of these dictionary pages down. Not very exciting, is it? Like I said, if you wanted to mosey along to a more thrilling more exciting video you have my blessing you can go you've been released from class <laughs> sound like a teacher what else can i show you oh i wanted to show you another print off i did now i didn't dye it my concern is that everything's got this moody yellow look about it and as much as the Edith books also have that look, probably not as moody as these papers. So I just went looking for paper that was a little bit that way, but not completely uh, yellowed. And this is the one I found. Now I just went looking for this shop. It's called Cotton and twig it'll be in the links below anyway i know it's there I've, I've just added it to my description on video one and two and this particular etsy store has 
got some files that are um, flower sack uh, prints. So back in the day, to there was a gentleman that had the bright idea that he would print onto his flower sacks. This is in the Depression. He would print onto his flower sacks this floral prints, gorgeous prints. Um, and then as the mums who were using the flower sack fabric, this cotton to make clothing for their children because they were literally, you know, trying to make ends meet. It was pretty tough times. So this particular designer has all sorts of files. Some of them are more wallpaper things like that, like that. But some of it is flower sacks. So I just went through and printed off a few of the files that I thought might suit. These will be used for decorating pages, collage, envelopes, just putting a pop of colour through. So I went and picked blues, um, pinks, but very pale pinks, more blues, a little bit of floral. That one must be... I definitely got that from Cotton and Twig, but I was just looking at that Artie Mays page and I just spotted this in the top corner. Look at this. Am I? Oh, no, I'm imagining things. See that there? That little snippet? For a moment, I thought it was the same as that, but it's of the same styling, as they say. So that must be from Graphics Fairy or wherever these designers get their clip art from to create their pages so that one's in amongst it I think these will help freshen the journal up more bluey greens pinks raspberries yeah a collection of that's one of my favorites I love using that such a pretty print it's up everywhere I got some stripes because sometimes you get a lot of flowers you just need a stripe so I picked that one um, oh, I've done a couple copies of the last set because I just really like them. So those are also in my description as a link. But the designers that I have linked below, like I said, they're just fantastic. They're, oh, there's so much stuff on their sites. My porch print, that's who this is from, I think. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think. Anyway, um, they have a fantastic site. This here is Artie Mays. Um, I believe they are maybe, oh goodness me, no, Christy Art. I love it when they put the names of their companies. If any of you are listening out there that do digitals, pop the name of your business on the digital somewhere. Just even if it's, it's tiny, tiny down on the bottom. It really helps us crafters because you could be at a retreat, you could be doing a video like myself, and we just can't remember everything because we're constantly perusing your shops and purchasing. And uh, to have that detail, like Tracy's done here, fantastic. Just a hot tip because you can guarantee we'll be looking at it. So I'm sliding those few pages in with the ephemera. That's a one day maybe make folder. I'll keep the pretty paper separate and back to what I was doing, tearing some pages. That's a page that was going into a journal that I didn't use and I've stitched around it. That's part of that range. So I might as well pop it into the pile. Where's my tear ruler? So what else have I done? When I get sick of tearing, I want to paint those covers because it's now late Saturday afternoon. And if I can get a coat of paint onto some of those shiny covers, they will dry nicely overnight and then if I do make another video today, which I probably will, whoops, I promise it won't be tearing paper. It'll be something more exciting. So I will um, come back and film video number four. So 
as I explained in the previous videos, these will be peppered in amongst the Roxy Journal of Stitchery projects. As you know, if you've been following me, I have a lot of stitching on my plate, which I'm just loving. But it does mean my time is, you know, it's just hours of work in that stitching. It's slow for a reason. It's slow. So if I can get a few videos made, say one day dedicated to Edith holding videos, and I'll just film three or four of them, have them sitting, let's use professional film Hollywood talk, sitting in the can. I've heard that before where they've made a film and it's in the can. So I don't know if it's ready for editing. Look at that. I've missed, missed that there. I don't know if it's ready for editing. That's what that saying means, but, you know, it sounds good, doesn't it? Our films are in the can. So if I can get a few made and in the can, I... Um, It'll take a bit of pressure off, especially if I, you know, get into the Roxy and uh, it's like a rabbit hole, isn't it? I'll get a prompt on a Wednesday. I might chew on it for a few days, just thinking about it, which is half the fun. And then it's on and it just all floods out. And sometimes it's, you know, two videos. Sometimes it's five videos because it's just become bigger than Ben-Hur. So... While I'm waiting for the next prompt, this will be a great, great little side project to do each month. And I am seriously considering William Morris next. I've got some kits that are burning a hole in my files. There's a few designers out there that oh, I just love some of their work. And uh, at the time, I've been watching their videos and purchased the file. And then the file's just sitting there, printed out, ready to go for a one-day project. So it'd be good to get Edith and William Morris out of my head. So I've got some William Morris fabric that oh, should be gorgeous to play with. Tell you another rabbit hole I've been going down. Um, now, what's it called? The Mouse Mansion. Oh my goodness. I think I need a Mouse Mansion. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but there was a lady, I believe, in Amsterdam or Denmark. I think it's Amsterdam, who spent many years making a Mouse Mansion. And then I think her children got involved and adult children and then turned it into a business. And now she's got a series of books connected to stories about the characters in the Mouse Mansion. The mansion itself that she spent, I think, six years building was put on a, a trolley or a dolly with wheels and was wheeled into its very own museum. I think it did some touring of museums around Europe for a while. It's now in its very own um, museum slash shop that you can go and visit. Oh, I'm sure it's Amsterdam. If anyone knows, just let me know in the comments um, which country she is from. But then the daughter has made a series of YouTube channels that talks you through the processes that you can use to make a mouse mansion. And it is uh, amazing. And it just, I don't know, I must have been a weak moment. So I've ordered um, from a wool fibre supplier here in Australia. It hasn't arrived yet. Um, some of the wool they use to make felted mice and it's sort of like a ball of wool and you break it all down and then you using um, a wool felting needle which pretty much looks like the needle that we would use to punch holes in a journal um, and some of the tools have multiple needles and you just 
you press this fiber together and it creates felt basically that's how they make felt but if you do it in the right way you can make a mouse and these little mice have got um, pliable limbs and you make their tail and oh if you just go to youtube and look up felt um, mouse wool felting mouse there's heaps of videos that give you different ways of making certain body types of mice and it's so cute like i need another project but you know you can always have a go so this <laughs> wool felting may be my next rabbit hole i fall down which is just crazy but they're so cute and the, the lady who that makes the mansion she has got a series of boxes like a fruit and veggie box that you get from your greengrocer because they've got sort of a firmer side that's not like a box you get stock in and that's my reference because of my business but they're pretty lightweight but the fruit and veggie boxes they're often folded down inside each other like the sides come up and fold in and there'll be little holes where it just clicks in so it's a stronger more rigid box so it appears that that's the secret to the boxes she then uh, joins all these boxes together on top of each other and let's say well, here we go now we're on a tangent let's say that's one box she'll put another box like that then another box like that you know she just pieces them together that might be a window that looks through the whole complex of boxes and then in each box she will decorate them to be a room in the mouse mansion so the laundry everything in there to do with the laundry and there'll be a mouse in there that she's made doing the laundry hanging up the washing washing machine the tubs the the faucets the the huh, on their website there's all this free stuff you can get which will make you little or you print the page out and then you fold it all together and you will have um cereal boxes washing powder boxes um oh, you name it it's there so as you can imagine it's a bit of a rabbit hole so yeah i'm envisioning vision imagining i'm imagining a corner of my craft room that is a series of boxes stacked on top of each other each box being a section of the house and then in there are the elements that you have made to sort of theme it so she shows you how to apply wallpaper which is just printed paper like what we're using here so you could pick something that had a very small print like that say so you're doing a little mousy girl bedroom this paper could be used to uh, line your box as in wallpaper so depending on how far you go with it technically everything is to scale and it's 1 to 12 is the scale that she seems to use that's sort of the dollhouse scale so this is where it became a thinking thing for me and I was just getting more and more excited as I was thinking it through which is just crazy is you can buy a dollhouse secondhand on the secondhand market for next to nothing so you're now starting with a timber frame instead of a um a box it looks a little bit more dollhousey where if you use the boxes it looks like mice are within the wall of your house building their mansion so it's got more of a mousy feel i guess or a rat <laughs> a ratty feel but some of them they use um ikea has picture boxes and i believe a dollhouse so some of them use that so there's a whole series of videos where they turn an ikea item into their mouse mansion um some use the boxes some use secondhand dollhouses um i know at one point this is how crazy it is at one point i was on the kmart site now they have a series of dollhouse pieces like bits that you can add together and they even have packs of furniture 
that you can buy and the kids paint and decorate, which technically is probably cheating because if you're a true mouse mansion person, you would make everything from scraps. So in our world, junk journal, you would make everything from scraps. You would not buy anything in. Um, so using plywood only, you would build all the furnishings you'd need for your mouse house. But if you get onto Etsy and eBay and even Amazon, there is furniture packs you can buy. So for $11, you can buy everything you need for a bedroom. So you get your bed, your dresser tables, your drawers, your mirror. Oh my goodness. So then I became conflicted. What type of mouse mansion manufacturer am I? Am I my classic scrounge everything to make it authentic mouse mansion like the lady in uh, Amsterdam pretty sure it's Amsterdam um, and doing it you know from nothing but to scale which that in itself is a lot of mathematics so that may not be a good idea but anyway that's that's one way to look at it um, or am I buy on eBay a pack of furnishing furnishings that um, you use to create your pieces and you just paint and decorate which is pretty simple and might sort of be a bit boring but then how long do you want to invest into this project this lady took six years I don't have six years and I guess the golden question is do I need a mouse mansion probably not so that was easy three days of thinking. I think it happened about when I had COVID. So I, I just didn't feel up to crafting. So I was just on YouTube watching videos and, you know, Googling and just cruising around cyberspace and up popped mouse me. So go and have a look. Go and check it out. If you think it's really cool and you agree with me that a mouse mansion in the corner of your craft room is just a must-have must have thing, <laughs> let me know in the comments. Or if you think, Corinne, you're not 10. You do not need a mouse mansion. Move along. Tell your story walking. <laughs> yeah. And the mouse mansions. Goodness me. But I do have some wool coming. So even if I don't do the whole mansion, I'm going to have a go at making a felted mouse or two. It was hard to order the wool because I didn't know how much I need. <laughs> so I've either got just enough to make one mouse or I've got so much coming. I've got a 20 year supply of wool to make felted mice. I even, here we go, it's another side story. I went looking at Etsy for this wool and up, up popped these people out there, talented, talented people that make them, the mice, and they make their clothes and they were just gorgeous. But one mouse Australian was $90. And of course, you can't have one mouse, can you? You've got to have a family. So by the time you, you had a look at a family group, and yes, it was slightly reduced, but one family I loved was $400 for a mouse that is no bigger than 10 centimetres. Where's my ruler? Goodness me, 10 centimetres. That's all in inches. What are we talking? That big. So, like from the tip of my finger to the palm of my hand, 10 centimetres, $100 for a mouse. And then, of course, I was thinking, oh, my goodness, that's just crazy. Get out of here. So I left that page real quick. Most of them are made, um, uh, well, pretty much everywhere. They're all over the place. There was even a place in Brisbane I found that sells supplies and does the odd class on 
wool felting, but more bowls and random things, not so much mice. So, yeah, anyway, that's my mouse house mansion story. Go and check it out because um, it was super cool. I think I'm organised. The only thing I haven't found is a ball clip for my envelopes, which is now sitting here on my table. So that's now I've got a ball clip on it. We've got some ephemera. I've just spotted another pile of paper. So I've just jumped up to grab it. I think it is just plain paper. So it did well. Really restocked. I'm just checking that there's nothing printed in amongst all this. Right. And that is a job done, I believe. Everything dyed is now sorted, torn and ready. Those torn pages are a little job that I will do on all of them, which is not a filming thing, is I will go around them and stitch in brown cotton on my sewing machine a decorative edge. So I won't be able to show that because it's a sewing machine job. And... Um, not really needed to be filmed. Okay. Lovely. All right, so as you can see, I'm an organizer. I'm a, everything's gotta be organized. So I've got my paper ready to go in my plastic container, which I got from my local stationery store, Officeworks. I've got an envelope of miscellaneous things printed that could be ephemera. There's my pages. There's a few in there, probably not enough, but I do want to add um, other pages like actual, you know, historical pieces and music. And I've got a, um, a book of Shakespeare plays that's really old. So I do want to slide in amongst these printed digital pages, some actual proper pages. I've got also now some collaging pages that I think will suit with the the look of Edith Holding. Awesome. Yeah. So I've sort of picked tones that will work and I haven't dyed it because it's already muted and I think I'm going to need that pop of colour. So what else have I got here on my desk to organise? Here's my dried flowers. So let's pop them in with the ephemera. So that's all together. And then we've got our envelopes which can be used with the papers okay I think that's it and of course my book covers so I've got a few minutes left before we hit the magic hour and I just want to start especially this one I'll leave this for a moment because I don't know if I'll feature it or cover it just not sure but I want to using some acrylic paint this is really old, back in the day when I was doing folk art. There's a word from the past. Joe Sonia paints were. I'm hoping that this has still got some form of quality about it, that I can just use it to do a rough covering. Okay, yeah, that's... That's holding. And this can dry overnight. So if I did decide to do something with a cover in the next video, they're ready to go. That's good. There's a few lumps. A few lumps in that paint. I might have to throw that out once I've done this little task because it it owes me nothing. Whoops. Just a bit of scrap paper to put lumpy bits on. Just 
So I may need to mention Mouse Mansion links in the descriptions. I'll just write that down. Mouse Mansion, the link will be below if you did want to have a little look. But be careful, before you know it, you're making a Mouse Mansion with me. Okay. The Mouse Mansion would be gorgeous on a bookcase. Like a, a smaller version of it, so it's not so deep. And it becomes part of your books. Like I could have all my Edith holding books and all my sewing books, my, my collection of reference books. And then in amongst it, I could nestle a room from a mouse mansion. So it could be like bookends. You know, when you stop your books from falling over, you could have a mouse mansion bookend. There's a whole other video series, isn't it? Let's just not get ahead of ourselves here. My mouse might look more like a wombat. If you don't know what a wombat is, it's an Australian animal. Google him. And <laughs> when you have a look at him, you'll see that it's no mouse. <laughs> That's pretty good. So it's just a, a little thin coat of white paint just to get rid of that shininess and sliding it off my desk to dry. Let's bring this one over. How are we going for time? A few minutes, perfect. So I'm really getting organized now. That's great. I think the next video I'm gonna do something with those envelopes. I just feel like just basic crafting, not thinking too much, just covering them with some decorative paper, ready to be something. And it's still, you know, I think it's two o'clock Saturday afternoon. Got no plans tonight, just maybe need to work. Been working on the, in the closure for my blue journal and that is a linen shirt that belonged to my mum and I'm adding to it lots of snippets of fabrics and bits that are left from the different projects and creating like a snippet roll but a big version of it. So in my last video for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery series I pinned everything down plus lace plus bits and pieces and I'm in the process of just securing those pieces, getting rid of all the pins and securing them down. So I think that'll be tonight's, tonight's activity, Saturday night in our house. <laughs> a couple movies and a bit of crafting. All right, I think I'm nearly there. Probably need to do the inside too, but I'll have to let this dry. Won't take long. So now if I choose a quite a thin fabric, say I pick a floral or something to cover this, I'm not gonna see that green text and the black text poking through. Disguises it nicely. Plus gets rid of that shiny surface. So at least now if I apply PVA glue and glue paper or something to it, even the fabric, it's gonna stick. Covers cop a lot of handling journal covers. You wanna make sure, especially if you're selling them, you wanna make sure they're nice and strong or even gifting them. You don't want them to, you know, break down. Okay, that's good. So now I've got a mess of paint to clean up. That's okay, I might just get a little bit more out of that tube. I think I will paint this one. I'll do it off camera, but I will paint it because I'm not going to use it. It's, yeah, I'd rather do something else. So I'll do that off camera and get that done as well. And then it can all dry. Okay, everyone, I'll leave it at that. Clean up my mess. I've got paint everywhere. Thanks for joining me. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.